Hello everyone, my name is Dean Chessman and today I'm going to show you uh, this new tool that I built called Vintage Lens. Okay, so first of all, you can uh, drag in this Tox and uh, right away I'll connect a video so you can start seeing some of the effects here. So by default everything's turned on, I'm going to go ahead and, never, and turn everything off and go through them one at a time. Okay. First of all, we've got uh, on our first our first tab here, we have the chromatic aberration. So if I turn it on, you'll see, especially around the edges, this sort of like split color effect that starts to happen, this rainbow fringe that grows as you go outwards. So um, this displacement amount can be adjusted, how much of an effect, and also like the size of the the size of the lens range. So um the further out you go means the effect of the, the ring the eff of where this fringe happens is further out. So if the tighter in, the further in you'll start to see that fringe pop up. Um, let's, let me pull in another video too so you can start to see what this looks like. So uh, the range you can see is really close, but as I move this up, it, it moves it further out. So you only see that around the edges. Okay. So that's the chromatic aberration. I also add a pre-blur displace that sometimes makes it uh, a little bit smoother so you don't get as hard lines on some of these, these aberrations. Okay, the lens blur, uh, kind of like it sounds, the lens blur blurs things out the further out from the lens you get. Uh, let's bring this video in as an example. So if I turn my chromatic aberration off, you can see if I go to my lens blur and I up the blur amount and I, I change my radius, so if I have a smaller radius, it means this this smaller area in the middle stays in focus, and the further out the are the more blurred the outside gets. So let me toggle it on and off to see blurs the further out we get. And I can also tweak the amount of blur here as well. Okay, in the next tab we have grain. So this is a simple kind of noise grain that gets added on top, kind of like a film grain. Uh, I can make it more, um, you know make a, a a higher effect so that the grain is much more pronounced. I can also decide not to animate it if I want, if for whatever reason, like maybe a really slight grain is what you want. Um, or if you have like a still image you're using that you just want it to stay static. Uh, turn it back off. Okay, now we have the RGB delay. So this is actually just an implementation of the RGB delay that's in the palette but I wanted to build it into this tool so it can be an easy drag and drop effect that I get. What this does is it delays the frame between each of the color values. So you'll notice if I delay my reds, they should be trailing behind the motion of what's happening on screen. Uh, I can mix the amount of this effect in, you know, if I wanted to mix with the original as well. And then a vignette, this is just your classic kind of edge vignette. Um, see if I toggle it on and off, it kind of brings all the focus into what's happening in the middle. I can change the radius of the vignette, the darkness of the effect, and tweak that. So now I have to turn everything on. You'll see it gets, you know, this sort of like retro, uh, you know, old lens, old VHS sort of effect happening that you can go in and uh, tweak all you want, and just drag and drop into your projects and uh, hopefully make some cool stuff. If, uh, if there's anything you would like to see added to this tool, I would definitely be open to hearing any ideas you might have. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it.